everybody, welcome to absorption versus variable costing. This is part five. We're going to have both a beginning and an ending inventory, and we're going to be doing this using FIFO or first in, first out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this one. So YYZ had sales of 57,000 units during 2025. During 2025, they produced 50,000 units, and they had 10,000 units in its beginning inventory. We're going to use FIFO for its inventory costing. And so this is pretty much the same question. I'm just kind of making some little changes here and there. But let's go ahead and talk about this one. So when I look at, if you want to kind of go back and look at some of my previous inventory costing videos from financial accounting, if I look at inventory, right, I have my beginning inventory and units plus my units produced. This is going to give me my units available for sale. Okay. So when I have my units available for sale, I'm going to go ahead and uh, subtract my units sold. And this is going to be giving me my units and my ending inventory. Okay. So over here, I had 10,000 units in my beginning inventory. I produced 50,000 units. My units available for sale are going to be 60,000. I sold 57,000 units. So my units in ending inventory are going to be 3,000 units. Now, when we've looked at these examples previously in the previous two videos, it was very cut and dry. If we had a beginning inventory, but no ending inventory, variable costing was gonna yield a better income. If we had no beginning inventory, but an ending inventory, absorption would be higher. So when we look at this over here, we don't really know. So we're gonna to have to kind of go through and figure this out on our own but we're gonna go through and use the same methodologies. So let's go ahead and get to it. So first thing we're gonna go ahead and do is prepare the cost per unit under variable and absorption costing. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So under variable, what goes in? Direct materials, direct labor, variable overhead, but fixed factory overhead, this is going to be a big, not applicable. So over here, my direct materials were 40, 50. To get my variable overhead, I'm going to have to take my, my variable overhead costs and divide it by my current year production of 50,000 units. So this is going to be 1.5 divided by 50,000 or 30. So my cost per unit under variable costing is going to be 120. Under absorption, this is going to be direct materials of 40, direct labor of 50, variable overhead of 30. But for my fixed factory overhead, this is going to be 4 million divided by my current year production of 50,000 units. So this is going to be 4 million divided by 50,000 or a total of 80. Okay, so a total of 200 per unit. So let's go ahead and we'll do, why don't we have fun? Let's go ahead and do variable costing first this time. So variable costing, I'm gonna start over here with my sales, basically my per unit, my units, my per unit, and let's have some fun with this. Okay. We're always having fun in accounting, especially in managerial accounting. So here, how many units did I sell? I sold 50,000 units at 339 per unit. So my total sales is going to be 57,000 times 339 or 19,323 less my variable costs. So what do I need to do? I'm using FIFO. What does FIFO mean? First in, first out. So the first goods in are the first ones expensed to cost of goods sold. So over here, 
I'm going to have my beginning inventory cost of goods sold. Remember, FIFO is a cost flow assumption. It means the first goods in are the first ones expense to cost of goods sold. If you haven't reviewed this, check out some of the other videos I have on inventory costing from financial accounting. So how many units do I have in my beginning inventory? I had 10,000. What is my per unit? Well, if it's variable costing, I'm only going to use my current period or basically the variable costs because I already expensed that fixed factory overhead previously. So over here, I'm going to have 10,000 times 130 or 1.3 million. Now for my current year cost of goods sold, I have 10,000. How many more do I need? I only take what I need. I need another 47,000 units or 57,000 units sold. I've already expensed 10,000. So I need another 47, okay? But it's okay because am I gonna have units left in any inventory? The answer is yes. So my current year cost of goods sold under variable costing is gonna be 120 per unit. This is gonna be a total over here of 5 million. 640,000. My other variable costs are my sales commissions. If I sold 57,000 units, I need sales commissions over here of a total of 1,710,000. So my total variable costs are going to be 8,650. This is going to give me a contribution margin of million, 19,323 minus 8,650 or 10,673 less my fixed costs. Okay. I don't worry about the fixed factory overhead here with the beginning inventory units because I expensed it last year. So my fixed factory overhead current year production, this is going to be $4 million. My SG and A, it's going to be 800,000. So my total fixed costs are going to be 4.8 million. So my net income under variable costing is going to be 10,673 minus 4.8 million or 5,873. Let's go ahead and take a look at absorption. Okay. Sales are going to be exactly the same, right? I sold 57,000 units, total sales 19,323, less my cost of goods sold. I'm using FIFO. So I'm going to start with my beginning inventory cost of goods sold. I need to take 10,000 units to, I'm going to take first in, first out. I'm going to take this full 10,000. When I'm going through and doing it though, I'm gonna include both variable and fixed factory overhead. Why? Because fixed factory overhead stays with the inventory. So right over here, we're gonna go ahead and put this here 10,000 at the per unit of 255, which is the variable, right? Plus the fixed cost per unit from my beginning inventory. Okay, so then I have my current year cost of goods sold. How many more units do I need? I need another 47,000 units. My per unit from this over here is going to be at 200 per unit. So when I multiply these through, I've got cost of goods sold from my beginning inventory of 2,550. Current year cost of goods sold, 9.4 million. So my total cost of goods sold under absorption is going to give me 11,950. My gross profit is going to be 19,323 minus 11,950. When I subtract my SGNA, I'm going to have over here my sales commissions sold 57,000 units. This is going to be at a sales commission rate of 30 per unit or 1,710,000. My fixed SGNA was 800,000. So my total 
SGNA is going to be 2,510,000 my net income under absorption costing is going to be 2,510,000 or excuse me, my net income was be 4,863,000. So let's go take a look at what's causing this difference. So I've got my net income under variable costing of 5,873,000, which is higher than my net income under absorption costing of 4,863,000. Okay. Now, when I go ahead and look at this, this is a difference over here of a million ten. Now, what's a little bit different about this particular difference is that it's coming from two places. And let's see about where it's coming from. The fixed factory overhead in the beginning inventory that was being expensed under absorption. This is going to be 10,000 units. And my fixed factory overhead per unit in the beginning inventory is going to be a total right over here of 125 per unit. Okay, so that's part of what the difference is being is causing this. Now, what the what's if I just looked at this here, we'd be saying, okay, Tchaikovsky. Is 1,250, but this is 1,010. Why is there a difference? Well, the difference is becoming from the fixed factory overhead, the ending inventory that is not expensed under absorption. And my ending inventory in this case here was 3,000 units. So if I take over here my ending inventory under absorption of 3,000 units, and my fixed factory overhead per unit under absorption costing, which is 80, right? So my fixed factory overhead for my ending inventory under absorption was $80 per unit. This is 3,000 times 80, or this is gonna be $240,000. Right, so this one a million ten is not coming from one place. Rather, my basically the the net income is higher under variable because this net this beginning fixed factory overhead was already expensed in the previous year. However, two hundred and forty thousand of my expenses are higher because this was expense this year that's not being expensed under absorption costing. So the difference here is a million ten, and this is where it's coming from. So I want to thank you for joining me here today. Hopefully you like, hopefully, uh, please remember to like and subscribe. I uh, really appreciate your support of the channel. And uh, if there's anything else you'd like to see, feel free to ask for it at the bottom. And I look forward to seeing you on future videos. Have a great day.